Um, I'm John Keller. I'm here, the director here at this planetarium. Uh, first and foremost, I have to apologize for showing up just for my talk at the very last talk, no less, <laughs> uh, with the start of the semester and the start of uh, public programs and my whole life in general. Uh, I haven't had time to join in, but I know Nick and Brianna have been able to participate and we're really, really grateful for everything that LIPS is doing. Um, I'm also getting on a plane tomorrow to go to Spain to help out with a NASA Lucy mission occultation. Um, Lucy is flying to seven Trojan asteroids. And actually in the next three weeks, we're doing occultations in Spain, Senegal, and Las Vegas um, to support that mission. So lots of occultation chasing on the, on the maps. Another reason why I've been a little bit, a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, looking towards August, because that's so far in the future that there was plenty of time, uh, this planetarium is super enthusiastic to um, to host LIPS uh, here in Boulder, Colorado next August. As you know, we were hoping to host in August of 2020. Uh, and as of March of 2020, that all stopped. So we have a couple of um, slides to share, plenty of time for questions and additional ideas. So if there are ideas that you have in addition to these ideas, uh, we're very excited to co uh, co create. The tentative dates we're currently looking at are August 2nd to the 5th, Tuesday through Friday. Um, August 2nd to the 5th of 2022. Um, and this is the entrance to our theater if you haven't been to the planetarium yet. It was, uh, our theater was built in 1974. Um, and so we're also coming up on our 50th anniversary soon. Um, we are going to be kicking off the conference with Dr. Sherilyn Morrow, who's here with us today. Um, Sherilyn has been the creator of, of, of the world popular kinesthetic astronomy um, materials from the late 90s and early 2000s and is also the outreach coordinator for the PUNCH mission, which is incorporating even more embodied activities into PUNCH-related science. But so Sherilyn will be kicking off um, a workshop the on Tuesday, August 2nd, before the workshop starts on Wednesday. And we'd encourage you to come and participate in that, that half-day workshop, or that, that, that workshop beforehand for a half-day. Um, Dr. Uh, sorry, Eddie Goldstein will also be giving the keynote address here on Wednesday. Um, and uh, Eddie, as you know, or Mayno has done a lot of science literacy and science education and communicating science to the public. So he'll be giving a presentation or a keynote address that first day. Um, we also have the opportunity for you to present to actual public audiences. And so we would like to try this idea of, I mean, we have audiences coming to Fisk throughout the summertime. It's nice to present live interactive ideas to each other, but it's also interesting to watch us each other present to actual live audiences. And so, in kind of a shadowing, workshopping, lesson study type of perspective, we have opportunities where you could present public shows to sixth graders and second graders and families while the rest of LIPS is also there. And then we can also debrief and talk about those experiences with actual live audiences. Um, Sherilyn, did you wanna say anything about, I'm putting you on the spot here, but would you like to say anything about uh, that half day of kinesthetic astronomy? Uh, well, no, we're just gonna have some fun. And I think by then, uh, you know, it will be uh, uh, more adapted and integrated into um, the dome as a result of the work on Punch Outreach together, John. So John is our co-director for Punch Outreach, uh, this mission to explore the sun's corona. Uh, and so we expect to be evolved beyond what some of you may have experienced in the past, uh, you know, in, uh, in that workshop. So really, really looking forward to that. And Carrie and I have a plan to speak on October 1st uh, mm -hmm. to hash out some additional details. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for letting me solicit your unprepared thoughts. <laughs> um, I also want to emphasize that you, that, that you do not have to present in front of a public audience. We are, not, we are also going to have a regular session where we get to just talk amongst ourselves. But if that idea sounds attractive to you, there will, place, there will be a place in the application to indicate that I would like to really present this to a public audience um, as part of the workshop. Um, in terms of FISC, what our facility offers, we have um, 203 seats, so roughly 200 seats in our theater. Um, we also have a small stage that you can see in the back here, um, of the back of this image. Uh, we have both a digital system, a, a, digit, a, a sky scan, um, DS2 system. Uh, so we have six projectors around that give us an 8,000 pixel by 8,000 pixel dome. And then we have a megastar projector in the middle of our theater here inside of this plexiglass box. It raises out of the box to the spring line and it uh, can project 10 million stars up onto the dome. 
uh, we have a hybrid system between the the for the SkyScan system and the Megastar system. Um, so uh, we also just recently renovated our floor. This entire region here was clearly where our Zeiss uh, Zeiss Mark Six projector used to be. So we've covered up our pit area. So we have access to this entire floor area in addition to the stage for doing having audience members get up and move around within the theater and not be trapped in their seats. Um, we are planning to provide low cost lodging on campus. Uh, we have a dormitory nearby, Kitcher's Dormitory, and hopefully the campus where you will be able to stay at an affordable rate will be literally less than a two minute walk or less than a minute walk to the planetarium. Um, and so we're hoping to have a real community of everyone kind of living, working, playing, and learning from each other on campus um, during, during those four days. Um, I think that's all of the details about that part of the facility. Um, we also, as part of a recent upgrade of our SkyScan system, uh, uh, we also have uh, invested in having a live input system where you can use your laptop to project on our entire dome. And I'm gonna pass it off to Nick Conant to describe a little bit more. Um, and Nick, would you like to share your screen as well um, to talk about our live input system? Yeah, I'll do that in a second. Um, but first I just wanna mention with this picture, what we did is we had uh, this presenter in front of a green screen, uh, Mr. Skeleton over there and uh, projecting uh, the skeleton then five times on our dome in some kooky uh, April Fool's Day prank. <laughs> but uh, the idea was, well, we could actually have the audience talking to somebody through a webcam uh, who is not even in the theater and that person could then respond back and uh, we could project them anywhere. We could project them inside of a spaceship or something. And so I still look forward to practicing this. Definitely provide tea for you, Jenny. That is completely, I have, we have, we actually have this small company called, you may have heard of it called Celestial Seasons, I think, Celestial Seasons. Um, that is also headquartered in Boulder. So maybe that should be a side field trip. The live and split system that we will hopefully give you a demonstrate, demonstration of in a second is, um, Essentially, it's a whole other, a whole additional computer in addition to our digital sky computer uh, that will allow you to plug in with an HDMI connection, uh, uh, your computer and your laptop, and actually have a 2000 pixel um, resolution dome, and we can move your laptop image to all different directions. And so you can actually bring in your own planetarium software uh, without requiring any additional um, uploading or, or testing on our system. We can definitely provide uh, 8K by 8K software availability is to bring that into our system ahead of time. Um, so we will definitely work with all of, all of you. If there's a specific type of software you'd like to get onto our system to do it in 8K, we can work on that. Um, but this option, this live input system uh, at the 2K level is gonna be perfectly easy for us to show this type of software, that type of software, this type of simulation. Um, so that is the option of the live input system. Um, in terms of just Boulder in general, if you haven't been here, we're at the we're at the very edge of the plains and the Rockies. So this is the this is our dome in the foreground and the and the Boulder flat irons in the background. Um, so there's a range of hiking opportunities throughout the Boulder area um, and opportunities on the CU campus itself. Uh, we are also very close to Rocky Mountain National Park. If you want to get higher up than 5,280 feet, up to 14,000 or up to 12,000 and 14,000 feet. Uh, Rocky Mountain National Park is just next door, about an hour and a, about a 45 minute drive to an hour drive northwest of us. Um, and then we are also very close to the Denver, we're in the Denver Boulder metro area. Um, so within Denver, we have the Denver Museum of Nature and Science where the Gates Planetarium is located. Uh, Meow Wolf is actually just, in, just opening right now of an, immersive, um, an immersive space that they have opened up over the last year and a half. Um, we're very close to downtown Denver, where you can go to, to a Rockies game. Um, and then this is a shot of Boulder Pearl Street, which is a pedestrian mall, mall here down in, in the Boulder area. So lots of opportunities um, to share uh, when you're not actually uh, learning about lips things. Um, and so I encourage you to think about staying, you know, the weekend <laughs> before or the weekend after. Questions regarding COVID uh, response. Um, uh, I'm actually really impressed with how the CU Boulder community has been handling COVID. Uh, we have very high vaccination rates here on campus. We are require, require vaccines for our students, faculty, and staff. Um, we actually currently have 95 and 96% vaccination rates among our students who have reported, and we have roughly 90 to 95% reporting. 
So that means we have a minimum of 87 to 92% vaccinated individuals on campus. And Boulder County in general is at 83% right now in terms of eligible vaccinations. Um, we have 80, 83% of the entire county has been vaccinated. Um, we are requiring indoor masking uh, across all buildings on campus. Every facility requires indoor masking currently. Um, and we will, we are doing, we will stay at that, we stay at that rate until we've had a 21 sustained, 21 day sustained period of, of a certain number of COVID cases. We're actually right now decreasing in our COVID levels. Again, this is all variable. Things will be different in August, but just, just so you know, we've been working very closely with the Boulder Public Health uh, officials and office, and our campus has had a very proactive response to uh, providing as, as safe of an environment as we possibly can. So through added ventilation, uh, through cleaning of our theater between every show, through masking and very high vaccination rates, we're very confident we'll be, we'll be able to hold this event in person uh, regardless um, of where we are in terms of how we're responding to the pandemic. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to really encourage you to come visit us. Uh, this is a shot from the AstroViz 2018 uh, conference. Um, I have my hand in front of John Allured's face, uh, but uh, you see there Thor Metzinger, our production manager, Brianna Ingerman, who you've met, our education manager, Nick, who we're gonna pass it back to to see if we can do the live input demo. He does amazing things in the theater. Um, and, then, and then myself, uh, the new person on the block. I've been here the last three and a half years, uh, but I'm really enthusiastic and excited to have you all here at Fisk um, for this next and the first, the first in-person lips of the decade, um, if you will, uh, which we're hoping to have come up in 2022. Awesome. Nick. Thanks, John. Before yeah. we kick it over to, um, to Nick, I had a question from Susan. Will people be required to be vaccinated to attend? Um, go ahead, John. If, if you want to, or I can take that. Uh, go for it. Okay. Feel free to say <laughs> say something different if I don't capture your thoughts. Uh, my thought there is that um, it's going to depend greatly on what the situation is next summer, but if COVID is still prevalent as it is right now, it'll be either proof of vaccination or a recent um, negative test. 72 hours seems to be the typical um, proof of a negative test within 72 hours. That's what I'm thinking, at least at this point. Yeah, and to add to that, there is, we, we, um, we have mandatory vaccination for students, faculty, and staff. But that is not the case for members of the public and guests who are not part of the campus community. Mm -hmm. So there's not a stipulated uh, campus policy that you have to be vaccinated to be on campus. Um, and so we'll be following whatever, whatever guidelines Carrie and Lips would be is most comfortable with. Um, and that's, that's what's true for my flight to Spain tomorrow, right? I don't, you either have to have proof of vaccination or, um, a recent test within the last three days in order to get into, get into that airport. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Excellent. Well, Nick got it working. So we're ready when you are, Nick. I'm excited. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi, Nick. If you, if you pin my video, you'll get to wave at yourself on our dome. How do I? But uh, you can see this is our live input system. And uh, if I make it even bigger, bigger. Oh. Anyway, so what you can do is you could actually, if you have a laptop with say the Digitalis software on it and you want to project it on our entire dome, you could wrap your entire uh, software on our dome and you could present a show with your own software. Right now it's cutting in and out because we need to buy new converters, um, but uh, it's uh, usually pretty solid. And one other thing we can do is that we have a, an actual, this is doing 2160p resolution. So it's not too bad, you know, upresing it, it'll look like a 2K image, it's not awful. But we do have a uh, separate standalone computer that also is doing live input at uh, 7680 by 8640 resolution. So that's 8K by 8K essentially. And I wanna show that by putting that on on top like this. Oh yeah, there are two Nicks logged in on the call and uh, that's because one of me is upstairs and one of me is down here. Well, this isn't, this isn't showing up too well, but I was trying to show the blockchain. Somebody showed me last night how you could actually display the Bitcoin blockchain uh, visually, a thing called like a Symphony IO or something like that. But uh, anyway, maybe I can try something else, something that's a bit brighter. 
Well, now you can see that this is actually a full dome software uh, that is now on top of the Zoom thing happening at the same time. So within our Digital Sky 2 software, we can actually then have three different live inputs as well as this full dome input. Uh, and the, of course, the live inputs can be dragged as big or as small as we want. We can duplicate them around. So if there are different types of things you want to do live, either through a laptop, like a cell phone, a tablet, or you know, different gaming consoles, we can stretch it or distort it or make it as big as we want at 2160p, 60 frames a second. And I'm still you know, trying to crack this nut on what is the best thing to do with it? How do we use it for a live audience? We've only been presenting to live audiences with it for the last you know, two months or so. Uh, so I'm really interested in hearing the, you know, uh, thoughts of our live input community, uh, sorry, our live interactive planetarium community. But uh, this is something I really look forward to is actually then being able to host this conference, seeing your own software and what you do in your own planetariums here in front of everyone, because doing it in just one dome at a time, you can only talk about what it is you do. But now you can actually show us, you can bring your software with us and we can install it or you can plug in your laptop and it should just work. So that's what I'm excited for. Nick, is there any audio syncing issues with yours? Because I've done uh, similar presentations before where someone's piping my content into their dome and there were audio sync issues. Um, we can delay the audio uh, through our system so we can actually offset it by however much we need to. So yes, there is an audio sync by default, but we have to, we can adjust for it and we can adjust it manually on the fly. That's a good question though, because I, I wasn't anticipating that when we first got this system, but of course that, that should have been something to think about. And then if I have dark matter content, are you are you all thinking about upgrading to dark matter or, or we're gonna strictly stick to DS2? We have dark matter. Um, we're still learning how to use it. Whenever, uh, whenever I get somebody who learns how to use it, they always leave before they can train us. <laughs> um, so I need to sit down just myself and just learn more about how to use dark matter, but it, it works, it's on our system. Um, and uh, we need a little bit more dedication to it. Uh, we also have open space um, available. So That's right. we, we have open space on our system as well as dark matter and, and digital sky two. Yeah, we mostly use digital sky two and open space uh, these days live. So, you know, we use open space a lot for university classes. Anyway, I'm excited about that. Like I said, because I wanna see what you do in your own planetariums in our planetarium, uh, because I can't go and visit all of you uh, all at once, but you can all come and bring your planetarium with you here. Other uh, questions or thoughts or ideas? We did have a question to... earlier, um, which may require some thought, but the possibility of having some streaming sessions or mm -hmm. having the ability to watch sessions remotely. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's definitely a possibility. We have, we have, we do stream our graduation and other events. Mm. Um, we don't stream all of our shows because we want people to come to our theater. <laughs> but for purposes <laughs> of this, we could definitely set up a live stream if that would be helpful. Cool. I had a feeling that would not be a problem. Yeah. Good to confirm it. Other comments or questions? I did notice that you cut out the seats from the sweet spot. Is that, is that? Accurate when 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 I show when you, yeah. So is, no. isn't the isn't that row uh just like the sweet spot the best part you want to sit? Yeah, so that is where that's where the pit used to be for our Zeiss Mark Six, uh, the the um tw the twenty twenty foot diameter pit is underneath that floor that we've built. Um, we I have intentionally advocated for not putting seats there because I want people to be able to move around inside of the dome. And so, uh, and we also did the renovation of our seats before we, before I arrived and started to think about what we would renovate in terms of the pit. Um, so uh, right now I'm excited to see how we can continue to use this space for, for audience members to not just be in their seats throughout the time that they're at the plant, at the planetarium. Um, it is, the sweet spot is, you know, it, it's, it's up, it's at, you know, 45 degrees as people are facing. And right now the existing seats do face towards that sweet spot on the dome. But, but you are correct, we're, we're not utilizing that seated space to which where you're sitting directly at, the, directly at the sweet spot on the dome. I mean, I like how clean it looks. It looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's um, again, and again, what we were previously didn't have any of that real estate, right? That was just a big empty space. In fact, a number of audience members have recently commented, oh, you have a new projector in the middle of your theater mm -hmm. because it was always behind the wall that was protecting them from falling into the pit. Um, and so they actually didn't necessarily know there was a megastar in the middle of the theater. And so now it's, um, 
now it's dead center and, and on display in the in the front of the space. Christina had a question. I, I see it in the chat. Do you mean you're you're confused about the the live input? Is that what you mean, Christina? Uh, right. Yeah. So for sure, the we could definitely talk about the live input system. So it's essentially um, essentially we have a cable that you can plug any device into: cell phone, laptop, um, um, iPad, Surface, whatever you'd like to plug in. Uh, Nick can actually probably show the show you the cable. Uh, there, yeah, there's his laptop, and he has plugged his his laptop into that cable. That cable then goes to a computer, which will then interface with your device and allow us. We have the capability to stretch, rotate, duplicate, mosaic, and move whatever the laptop is in as outputting um, onto the dome. And so, at the at the minimum, if we want, to, if you had software you'd like to share with us, we'll be able to show that software in full dome, not just in a two dimensional. Um, in a in a two dimensional projection, we can we can wrap it around the entire dome space. So, as particularly if you have a fisheye type of like if your if your computer is outputting fisheye, we'll be able to project that fisheye and give you and and basically replicate the dome experience that you're you're perhaps more used to showing with the software that you're using in your theater. Yeah, that's really cool that it can um, replicate one projector, even though it's dividing the signal up to six, you said, right? Six projectors? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, really cool. It's, yeah, that, that computer is interfacing with the six projector computers to then uh, to wrap it all together. That's cool. But we actually can, um, we actually, John does something where he's drawing on a, a drawing board and that projects onto the dome as well. So he can draw equations and formulas and diagrams. And uh, I was thinking that with our, um, with this other, computer, if we could get a tablet cooked up to that thing, we could actually try to trace out constellations on the dome. So taking what I think Andy did in LIPS 2018 was what if someone could design their own planetarium uh, constellation and then they could you could pass them the tablet and they could draw it onto the sky themselves. And I, I want to make that work. But I don't know uh, the technology yet to make that functional. I know it exists. I know it's possible. It just takes some designing. One last thing I'll mention, um, I, you, I believe that the last, well, some sometime last summer, uh, we presented the live musical Voyagers uh, that we have been co-creating co with Math Theater. Um, we rehearsed that actually for the two weeks prior to COVID shutdown on March 13th, which was our opening date. Mm -hmm. And so we never performed Voyagers, but they are returning this October for our world premiere of the Voyagers live musical. Um, there's a very strong possibility that we can bring Math Theater back for that for the November for the August event to to do a screening of that live musical, um, if that's if that's useful and interesting to the community as well. So we'll work with Math Theater if that's a, if there's a strong interest in having that musical be performed, uh, both to the public and as part of LIPS. That's another possibility. Yeah, I wanted to introduce Amanda who helped to make that one of our students. Exactly, Amanda awesome. is the dome the dome master of the of the Voyagers musical. Yeah, hi, it was a lot of fun. I'm really excited for October to roll around so we can really show you what we got. Yeah, if you're, if you're around Boulder in October of this year, come on over. <laughs> we can sell you some tickets <laughs> for the musical. But hopefully that gave you a, ta a taste of what we're planning for next August. I think it's going to be fantastic. I was so excited when we were planning for 2020 and then, ah, and then it didn't happen in 2021. Summer wasn't looking good, and now I'm hoping we finally get there next August because it's going to be it's, it's going to be the best lift ever. Um, seems every year the bar gets a little higher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will try not to jinx it. Um, 